My engineering portfolio allowed me to get my very first internship within only two weeks of applying, despite the fact that I had zero design club experience and zero industrial experience. And I've already gone over how you should structure this portfolio, but maybe you haven't even made any projects before, any personal projects, and you don't know where to start. So today I'm gonna to walk you through the exact steps that you must take before you start building your design portfolio. All right, so first things first, you're gonna to wanna to choose which skills you're gonna display in this design portfolio. And I'm gonna show you how. So this is gonna be very dependent on which major you are in university. So whether you're a mechanical student, electrical, civil, chemical, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, you're gonna to wanna to choose the hard skill that you wanna display in your design portfolio. And it's gonna be different for all of us, right? So for me personally, I chose to display some CAD skills, some Arduino skills, and 3D printing skills as a mechanical engineering student. And if you're an electrical, maybe you want to do some PCB design that you've done in the past. Or if you're a chemical student, you might want to do some PID control system that you've done in MATLAB and Simulink, right? Or maybe if you're a civil student, you want to do some structural FEA or the concrete you ate for breakfast. <laughs> Gosh, I'm sorry. You guys, got, you guys got bullied too much. Now to choose which skills you want to include in your portfolio, you're going to search up the position that you're interested in. Now you're going to go on Glassdoor, LinkedIn, Indeed, wherever you find your jobs. And you're going to look at the, the description of that type of job. So maybe you want to be a structural engineer, electronics engineer, control systems engineer, whatever it is, search it up on LinkedIn and look at the key responsibilities and the qualifications. All right. So this is where you're going to find all the gold, the, the pure answer to the question, what should you include in your design portfolio? So me personally, I want to be a product design engineer. So I'm going to look at the key responsibilities. I see that it requires some solid work, some 3D modeling, drawings, prototyping skills. That's where the 3D printing comes in. And also the qualifications, some other information you might want to include as well. So therefore, I base my engineering portfolio off of these skills that I found in my desired position. Okay. So we could, we could settle with this, but we could also go a step further by choosing which industry we want to go in. So whether you want to go into energy sustainability, aerospace, oil and gas, transportation, etc., etc., defining the desired industry that you want to go into is going to help you guide which projects you're going to want to build in your design portfolio. So step two, after you have determined which hard skills you're going to showcase in your design portfolio is to actually build the projects. And that's where determining which industry you want to work in is going to be very important. So let's look at an example here. Let's say you want to get into the industry of consumer electronics, like companies like Apple, right? And let's say the position you want to get into is a hardware engineer. And you looked at the skills, you searched them up on Indeed, and you saw that they require some PCB design, some microcontrollers and uh, coding experience. Now, you're going to combine the two and determine which project you should tackle and take some time invested in. Now, for in this specific case, it might look like making a, a light controller lamp, which is touchscreen to make it dimmable and lightenable, right? These kind of things would attract the recruiters at those consumer electronics companies, right? Would it not? Because you're showing that you have experience of a hardware engineer and you're showing that you're interested in consumer electronics. This is how a design portfolio could be very, very attractive to any sort of recruiter in any sort of job that you want to get into. Now, for a personal example, let's look at let's look at my situation where I wanted to be a product design engineer. And one of my desired industries that I wanted to get into was robotics. So what do you think I did? I obviously made some projects that were based off of those two details, product design and robotics. So right here, CAD design of this industrial robot arm. I made this in SOLIDWORKS and that showcased my CAD skills. Now also right here, some 3D printing skills and some Arduino and coding skills were showcased uh, through this gripper project, which is controlled by a potentiometer. So this, this, is, this is something that would appeal to the robotics industry and hiring managers for product design engineers. And then I showcased it in my design portfolio using the templates that I made that are included in the link in the description, which leads to my course. Now let's move on to another example of mine, which was that I was interested in the automotive industry. So 
What do you think I did? I obviously made stuff like engines, like gearboxes. These are these are manual transmission gearboxes. How is how would this not be interesting and intriguing to recruiters of the automotive industry, right? It shows that I know gear principles, which is important in that industry, right? It shows that I know how to prototype, which is important for a product design engineer. It shows that I know how to design in CAD, which is important for a product design engineer, right? This type of this type of crazy shit that you do where you're tailoring your projects to your desired industry and you're showing the skills required for your desired position is insanely powerful and that's why it only took me like two weeks to get my very first internship because i was doing this crazy sh crazy shit right here right freaking no no pro experience no design club experience hell not even anyone in my network and i still secured an internship because i was doing this type of stuff right here i was showing that i was interested in the company that I, I shared the same passion for them that I shared the same skills that they were looking for and I knew special details about the type of work that they do in that industry now another reason that this is insanely powerful what I'm telling you right now is that even if you don't get into your uh, desired industry like say your automotive you're still gonna have a very high chance that you get into your desired position right because you're still showcasing the hard skills required for in my case, a product design engineer, right? So listen to what I'm telling you, because this is this is very smart, but common knowledge. Like it, it's common sense, right? Just tailor the type of stuff that you want to showcase in your design portfolio to the position that you want to be in, the dream position that you want to be in as an engineer, right? Okay, so step three, include some course projects. Include some course projects, right? It wouldn't hurt. So if you're in a rush and you don't have time, I would recommend doing this because you probably don't have time to make any personal projects. So if you're applying right now, look at some school projects that you've done in the past and see which ones would line up with your with your position. But if none line up as well, it it would still make sense to include course projects because it's better to have a design portfolio than not. And honestly, you might not think it, but there are a lot of projects and a lot of labs that you could include. Like I, I counted it right here, I'll show you. Like I counted all at the top of my head. It took me like like a few minutes to think of this. There's probably more labs and projects that I could include, but this is this is like a bunch of things that I've done in my university, in my in the courses that I've took at university. And this is this is freaking a lot. Like I haven't counted, but I'm not gonna name them all, but that's a lot. First year. Even if you're a first year student, you could still include like five different projects and labs in your design portfolio. So take some time and think about what you've done in your course projects. And maybe you didn't take any pictures, but you could still talk about them. You could still talk about them. So it's, it's actually crazy, like how much you actually do in school and you're paying like a million, a million dollars per semester. So you might as well take advantage of it and use some of the projects that you've done in those and make it not wasted time by putting it in your design portfolio. So that's the last step. But now you wanna take action, okay? So in conclusion, you wanna take the skills you wanna display from one, picking your position, and two, picking the industry you wanna get into. Now, based off of that knowledge, you wanna go on to step two, which is to build personal projects based off of which skills are required for your desired position and are attractive to your desired industry. Then step three, you're gonna to wanna to skip to the skip if you have zero time and you're applying like right this instant and you don't have any time to make personal projects. You're just gonna include some projects from school, from design clubs. And I am sure that you can get some from school because I counted myself. There are a fair bit that you can include. So that is the action you want to take before you start building your design portfolio. Now moving forward, you want to build your design portfolio and you're going to use the link in the description, which shows all five portfolio templates that I included as only a bonus to my course, which shows the step-by-step -step process of how to make high quality applications and get your very first internship, even if you have zero experience at all, because I've done it myself and I'm sure, I'm sure that you can as well.